wire antennas, helical uh, antenna, series on antennas and wave propagation, lecture number 4.12. Helical antennas are well known for their uh, circular uh, polarization uh, characteristic. They are widely used uh, in uh, establishing uh, satellite uh, communication systems. Structurally, they consist of uh, a helical coil and a conducting plate. In the present uh, session, we focus on uh, the structural features, electrical characteristics uh, and uh, radiation properties of uh, helical antennas. Let us uh, begin the session with a small introduction to helical antennas. These are well known for their circular polarization. These were in invented by J.D. Cross. Uh, they find uh, several applications uh, in VHF and UHF uh, regions. VHF stands for very high frequency. UHF uh, stands for ultra high frequency. It is uh, basically a conducting wire wound in the form of a helical coil. When excited with the non resonant currents, traveling wave currents, it gives a radiation maximum along the axis of the coil, and the antenna is said to be functioning in axial or end fire mode. In most of the applications, it is operated in this mode for its circular polarization. Basically, there are two modes axial mode and uh, normal mode. In axial mode, it gives uh, circular polarization. Most of the times, in most of the applications, it is used in axial mode or end fire mode. If it is excited to carry resonant currents, then it radiates maximum in the direction normal to the helix axis. So it is broadside operation. In this case, the antenna is said to be functioning in a normal or broadside mode. In normal mode, it can give any type of polarization. So these two paras give a lot of information pertaining to helical antennas operation. When excitation is with the non-resonant currents, it goes into end fire mode of operation. Polarization is circular. When it is excited with the resonant currents, it goes into broadside mode of operation. Polarization can be anything including circular. Here is a shown structure of a helical antenna. S is a spacing between turns. D is dia of the turns. Here it is A, not L. Capital L is used to denote length of one turn here to here. It is indicated by L. D is diameter of the wire. Notice capital D is diameter of the oil whereas D is diameter of the wire, conductor wire. So here input is there. This is a ground plane. When input is given here, it radiates rightwards as the current travels like this along the length of the coil. The radiation is outwards. Because of some reflections here, impedance mismatch and reflections, small amount of current also flows in the opposite direction towards the feed end. It results in certain amount of uh, radiation in opposite direction of uh, the major output towards input. It is unwanted. The plane, ground plane, it uh, reflects this uh, radiation towards the main beam. Ground plane reflects it back towards the receiver side. Coaxial cable is used as feed in most of the cases. A few points regarding the structure of a helical coil. Handedness and modes. What are this uh, handedness and mode? The helical coils are characterized by handedness. If the helix is wound right handed, then it is called right hand helix, and if it is wound left handed, then it is called left hand helix. 
Handedness determines the sense of rotation of the electric vector in the resultant wave. So, sense of the electric vector in the wave is determined by handedness of the coil. Handedness of the helix is independent of direction, position from which it is viewed. This is used by IEEE to define the sense of rotation in the circular polarized wave in an unambiguous way. According to IEEE, right or left handed axial mode helical antenna radiates and receives right left circular polarization. So, what is right circular polarization? If it is be able to be received by right handed axial mode helical antenna, then it is right circular polarization. That way it is defined. So, polarization or sense of polarization of a wave is defined with respect to axial mode helical antenna, the point that is stressed here. Helical antenna can radiate in many modes depending upon diameter D and spacing S, yes, but prominent ones are two axial and normal modes, which were already introduced. The first one of finds several interesting applications, whereas the second one only very few are there. Here is shown the structure of a helical coil along with the terminology that is created around these coils. So this is the tube. It is wound in the form of a helix. Length of each turn is indicated by L. Dia of the tubing is by small d. Spacing of the turns is by capital S. Capital D indicates dia of the coil. A is total length. Here is given the legend. N number of turns. S is spacing between the turns. L is length of each turn. A is actual length of antenna, which is equal to Ns. Ln is, is uh, total length of antenna conductor. It is n square root of s square plus c square. c is circumference of helix, which is equal to pi d. Alpha is pitch angle. Pitch angle is an important parameter as far as uh, helical antennas are concerned. It is defined as the angle between the line tangent to the helix wire and a plane normal to the helix axis. It can be related to the spacing S and diameter D through the relation given by alpha equal to tan inverse S by pi D. Note that if alpha is 0, helix reduces to a loop antenna of n turns and when alpha is 90, helix becomes a linear wire of length equal to nL. The pitch angle alpha is tan inverse S by pi D. How this relation has come from here? This is C pi d, this is S, the L, this is uh, alpha by definition, pitch angle. It is quite easy to see that uh, alpha is tan inverse S by pi d. Modes and patterns. Uh, it has been told uh, that uh, several modes are there, but most important uh, ones are only two. Axial mode, normal mode. In case of axial mode, the radiation is end fire like this. Feeding is here. This is ground plate. This is coil. Current flows like this. It leads to radiation. Here dimensions are shown. Turn spacing is 0.25 lambda and dia is 0.32 lambda. In C is shown another mode, important mode, normal mode. But here the radiation is normal to the length of the axis it is broadside uh, spacing is uh, 0 0.05 lambda dia is 0 0.1 lambda several other intermediate modes are also possible but uh, they don't have much uh, practical importance for academic uh, interest is shown here in b a mode intermediate mode Notice here feeding is 
from sideways at the center of the coil. Radiation consists of four lobes and fire, backfire, broadside. Some more points. The structure of the helical antenna depends upon its mode of operation. If we want axial mode of operation, the structure requires structure is a thick copper wire or tube wound in the form of uniform helix coil, which is the actual radiator, and a flat metal plate called ground plate, useful to prevent backfire radiation. So, physical structure is uh, consisting of two things. One is a coil, uniform helical coil and a flat metal plate. Coil radiates, metal plate is used to prevent backfire radiation. Plate reflects backfire radiation towards end fire direction. The antenna is fed usually with a coax, but it can also be fed with the two loops replacing the ground, ground plate. Sometimes deep conical arrangement is used to reduce side and back lobe radiations. The helical antenna in axial mode is also called helical beam antenna. When in operation, it carries not only a forward traveling wave but also backward traveling wave. Backward wave can usually be neglected because it is small but at lower frequencies under smaller circumferences its influence on the radiation characteristic is significant. Backward wave on the helix produces radiation which after reflection from the ground plate travels in forward direction but with sense of rotation in opposite direction to the radiation of the outer wave resulting in a forward traveling wave to deviate uh, more from a true circular polarization. So here uh, it is not simply addition of uh, reflected backward wave with the forward wave. Issue is a little bit complex because uh, senses of these two waves they are uh, opposite to each other. It makes uh, the total radiated wave deviating from a true circular polarized wave. In axial mode, the helix is uh, a non-resonant as it carries a traveling current wave. This aspect has already been uh, touched upon in the beginning of the session. The phase velocity of this wave increases with the circumference uh, lambda but decreases with increase in pitch angle alpha. It can be less, it can be more, it can be equal to the velocity of the wave in free space. So its a relative phase velocity p is lambda p by lambda equal to v by c can be less more or equal to 1. The most important aspect of phase velocity is it changes automatically by just the right amount to not only compensate for frequencies change but also to provide increased directivity and super gain. Salient features, uh, mainly electrical features are uh, given here. Helical beam antenna is a broad band one giving a nearly circular polarization. Helical beam antenna is the name given to helical antenna when it is working in axial mode. In axial mode, it is a broadband one. It gives a nearly circular polarization. Important characteristics are mentioned here one after another. This mode occurs only when the dimensions in wavelengths are within certain limits. To be specific, it occurs when circumference of helix is around one wavelength. That is uh, in between 0 0.75 to 1.25 lambda. Spacing S is 0.25 lambda resulting in a pitch angle of 14 degrees. 2. In this mode of operation, the direction of maximum radiation is along the axis of the helix. 
and fire direction. 3. Polarization of the wave is nearly circular with the sense of polarization same as handedness of the helical coil. Axial ratio of polarization can be found equal to 2n plus 1 by 2n when n is uh, large AR becomes 1. AR1 means circular polarization. Axial ratio 1 means circular polarization. 4. Right handed coil gives uh, clockwise circular polarization whereas left hand coil gives anti clockwise circularly polarized wave. This clockwise anti clockwise refers to sense. To make uh, this sense clear, consider a wave emitted by helical beam antenna. It is circularly polarized. It means uh, electric vector in this wave it rotates while rotating the electric vector traces a circle like this if it traces a circle if it traces a circle then the wave is said to be circularly polarized if it uh, traces an ellipse then it is uh, wave is called elliptically polarized now the point is Rotation can be in uh, one of two directions. Can be like this. It can be in the opposite direction too. So it can be clockwise, it can be anti clockwise too. So handedness determines the direction of rotation of the electric vector. Rotation of direct uh, electric vector is referred by the term sense. So clockwise circular polarization means when the observer is standing and watching a receding wave. Wave is receding, wave is moving like this, observer is here. When he watches the electric vector <coughs> in the wave, if it uh, appears rotating in a clockwise direction then this wave is said to be clockwise circularly polarized wave. If it is rotating in the opposite direction then it is called anti-clockwise circularly polarized wave. We move to another point, fifth one. Directivity of the beam antennas depend upon number of turns, circumference and spacing of the terms. It is given by the formula. P is 15 n s lambda c lambda s lambda means s in terms of wavelength c lambda means c in terms of wavelengths so more the number of turns more is the directivity more is s lambda more is directivity more is c lambda more is directivity another point the first null beam width is given by this relation 115 over c lambda multiplied by square root of 1 over n s lambda in degrees and the above two relations are valid only when C lambda is in between 0.8 to 1.2 and pitch angle is in between 12 degrees to 14 degrees and n is more than or equal to 4. The beam width uh, decreases and gain increases with the number of turns, circumference and spacing of the coil. Notice the formulas given here are approximate ones. 7. Its eternal impedance is given by 140 C lambda ohms when fed axially. When the feeding is peripheral, it is 150 over square root of C lambda. What is axial feeding? This is coil. You can feed here. Of course, radiation will be from the other side. This is called axial feeding. Peripheral feeding means if you feed somewhere here. In such case, also radiation happens. But the feeding is called peripheral. Impedance changes with uh, type of uh, feeding. These relations are also valid only when C lambda is in between 0.8 to 1.2. Alpha is in between 12 degrees to 14 degrees when n is more than or equal to 4. The input impedance depends critically upon the pitch angle and size of the conductor. A remarkable property of a monofiller helical antenna is that 
input impedance is almost a constant resistance over an active bandwidth the resistance being easily set at any convenient value from 50 to 150 ohms eighth point an important feature is it is a broadband of course uh, it is not a surprising uh, thing because uh, it is a traveling wave radiator, non resonant antenna. Non resonant antennas are always associated with broadband natures. So, as a matter of fact, it is a broadband antenna. Bandwidth can be up to 70%. 70% means a huge quantity. With the increase in n, the number of turns, the, the bandwidth decreases. With the n, gain increases, but bandwidth decreases. It possesses desirable pattern, impedance, and polarization characteristics over a relatively wide frequency range. The natural adjustment of the phase velocity so that the fields from each turn add nearly in phase in the actual direction and a large attenuation of the wave reflected from the open end of the helix account for the broadband characteristics of the helical antenna. 9. Its important parameters are beam width, gain, impedance, actual ratio. All these parameters are functions of turns, number, frequency, pitch angle, alpha. They are also depend up, dependent upon feed arrangement, ground plate size and shape conductor diameter and helix support structure. Tenth point, it's a normalized radiation pattern assuming end fire with ID, increased directivity is given by this expression. Sine phi by 2n, sine n psi by 2 by sine psi by 2 cos phi. Here psi is 2 pi s lambda 1 minus cos phi plus 1 by 2n. The names Names of these uh, quantities are psi, phi, and their physical meaning all are uh, given in a detailed way in the session on uh, arrays and fire arrays. Now, in this slide, a comparison of uh, modes of uh, helical antenna are given. When it comes to dimensions, axial mode. Uh, Demands C is nearly lambda, S is nearly 0 0.25 lambda, alpha pitch angle is nearly 14 degrees. In case of normal mode, NL should be very, very small when compared to lambda. Ground plate is necessary in axial mode, not required in a normal mode. Polarization is nearly circular in axial mode. It can be anything in case of normal mode. Pattern is unidirectional pencil beam. In case of axial mode, it is omnidirectional fan beam. In case of normal mode, bandwidth is 70%. In case of axial mode, it is low. In case of normal mode, type of radiator is a traveling wave radiator. But here, in case of normal mode, it is resonant radiator. As uh, in normal mode, it is a resonant radiator, its uh, bandwidth also cannot be very large. In actual mode, it is a traveling wave radiator, so bandwidth is a large. Current over the helix is a traveling wave current. In case of actual mode, it is a standing wave current in case of normal mode. Gain is given by 15 n s lambda c lambda square. In case of actual mode, it is low in case of normal mode. Impedance is roughly 140 c lambda ohms. In case of actual mode, it is low in case of normal mode. Radiation efficiency is a high in case of axial mode. It is low in case of uh, normal mode. Applications include satellite communication in axial mode, cell phone handsets for normal mode. Now one or two points regarding the uh, application of uh, or usage of uh, helical antennas. Uh, in a satellite communication. Satellites uh, transmit a signal 
from sky towards earth or they receive signals coming from earth while signals are traveling towards earth or towards satellite they pass through certain ionized layers that exist at higher levels of atmosphere these ionized layers they tend to change the orientation of electric vector in the wave that is passing through them in a random manner it implies the amount of rotation of electric vectors orientation is unpredictable so we don't know the orientation of electric vector after the wave passes through the ionized layer to receive such a wave whose electric vectors orientation is unknown one has to use necessarily a circularly polarized antenna so for receiving a signal that is passing through ionized layers circularly polarized antenna like helical beam antenna is required this random change in the orientation of electric vector is called faraday rotation so to counter the ill effects of faraday rotation circularly polarized antenna like a helical beam antenna is a necessity some points regarding application circular polarization emitted by beam antenna is highly useful in countering faraday effect it is widely used to receive signals which reach the antenna after passing through ionosphere its circular polarization helps in countering the ill effects of faraday rotation the wave in the ionosphere satellite and probe communication particularly in radio telemetry is and nas find applications large number of applications helices operating in both end fire and back fire modes are useful as a feed elements for parabolic dish and nas this is another application for dish feeds covering a frequency range greater than provided by single helix two or more helices can be mounted coaxially inside each other with coincident phase centers another feed arrangement is a driven helix feeding an array of crossed dipoles acting as directors producing circular polarization the helix finds very few applications in a normal mode because it exhibits low radiation efficiency and narrow bandwidth in normal mode its applications are few and they are for omnidirectional broadcasting of fm and tv and also as a circular polarized antenna in a cellular handsets with this we come to an end to the present session in this session helical antennas are introduced various modes associated with their operation are also described salient features of these antennas are given and at the end application of these antennas they are provided hope this session is useful we meet again in another session soon with a new topic